what happened to Israel on October the 7th, the United States needs to back its ally in the Middle East, Israel, in its right to defend its its borders and its right to fix the situation with Hamas in Gaza. And we do not need to pause. We do not need to uh, be vague. We need to be 100 percent behind Israel so they can wrap this situation up, deter terrorism wherever it exists in the Middle East and move forward. Well, Congressman, at the end of the day, though, knowing that this is largely a messaging bill, is there any further action that you would like to see your chamber take that is not just largely symbolic and meant to send a West message to the White House? Well, we were more than symbolic when we passed aid to Israel. We've passed it time and time again uh, through the appropriations packages, through the supplementals and the like. But our speaker, our leaders, our membership has been on the Republican side overwhelming. Even Democrats have joined us. Many Democrats have joined us as they, they should. Support for Israel is needs to be bipartisan, needs to be uh, bicameral. And we need it to start from the White House. We need to tell Joe Biden loud and clear, unequivocally, that he's got to support Israel. No pauses, no ifs, ands, or buts. Support Israel. Get them the aid. Get them the arms. Let them secure their borders. Complete this mission. And then let's work for peace in the Middle East. Are you concerned about the findings in the State Department report, uh, Congressman, that questions uh, some of Israel's tactics in using U.S. provided weapons in Gaza? Should Congress be concerned about this? I'm personally not. October the 7th, Hamas was not concerned when they went in, raped, pillaged, plundered, killed, uh, engaged in terroristic acts that are unspeakable, unfathomable. Uh, this was an incursion into the sovereign state of Israel which cannot be uh, ever tolerated, can never be condoned. So no, um, war is heck, war is, is horrible, but, and casualties happen in war that are sometimes unintended. But remember this, uh, in the streets of Gaza, they were celebrating on October the 8th when Israel had been hit and, and, and terrorized. They still have American hostages, they still have Israeli hostages, Hamas has not given them up until Hamas decides to do the right thing, give up the hostages and, and agree to stop incursions into Israel. Think about it. They're still wanting to fire rockets into Israel. They're still calling for the destruction of Israel. So, again, the United States needs to be unequivocal in its support for Israel, for funding, for arms, uh, for, for uh, diplomatic aid anything that it takes to secure Israel's position in the Middle East with its neighbors. So we'll look to see further action from uh, the House in regard to Israel this week, Congressman. There's also another issue, perhaps more uh, time pressing, that will need to be taken up. The FAA reauthorization. The House last week passed a one-week extension. The Senate passed the full five-year bill uh, last week. It will be the House's turn to take it up, and we understand it will be uh, done under suspension of the rules. Do you anticipate any difficulty in getting that passed in time? I, I don't. We need to get the FAA passed. It's a good bill. It's not a perfect bill. But doing it under suspension for your, your viewers means that it will require two-thirds as opposed to a majority. What that means is um, when you cannot pass a rule, and we've had some problems passing rules in the majority. Uh, I've always voted for the rule uh, in the majority as a Republican. Uh, some of my colleagues have chosen not to. Respectfully, I disagree with that. But um, since we can't guarantee the passage of a rule, I think our best chance is to do this on suspension, get two thirds. I think we'll get that done very quickly and with relative ease. Congressman, I want to ask you a question of, uh, from your view on the Appropriations Committee. We just went through a painful process to keep the government funded that sucked up the first third to half of this year. Knowing that we've seen at least a markup session on a Republican bill, we've seen the president, the White House, drop their budget proposal. Can we get to work where your committee start before the last minute, say this summer or fall, for a regular order appropriations process in fiscal 25? Joe, you're absolutely right. I believe in regular order. I believe in sub committees, full committees doing their work, getting to the floor, getting appropriation bills passed, and getting them ready for conferencing with the United States Senate and ultimately to be signed. 
The reality is we are doing our work. I chair the Energy and Water Subcommittee of Appropriations, but I can assure you, Chairman Cole and all of the other 12 cardinals of which I'm one, subcommittee chair people, will be working on their bills. Some of the bills, Joe, are easier to pass than others. My bill, the Energy and Water Bill, is a bill that is much easier to pass than some of the others. Legislative Branch is an easier one. Milcon VA is an easier one, but some will be harder. What I anticipate will happen is we will write our bills, pass our bills out of full committee, get them to the floor in the best position to be passed. But the reality is, and, and I hate to predict, but with an election year, the reality I think probably will be um, a short-term CR into the latter part of the year, largely due to some of the complexities between the House and the Senate and Republicans mm -hmm. and Democrats. But um, I'm going to work uh, night and day to make sure that our bill gets done uh, and that my colleagues who have other bills uh, as appropriators will get their work done and get it done in due course.